Dandy Ace is a top-down roguelite featuring the flamboyant magician Dandy Ace, his magical cards, and loads of over-the-top voice acting and meta-references. Hey guys, it's Cody with Indie Game Pulse. Let's get right into it. I was given a review copy of this game, but have done my best to stay objective in my critical evaluation. As you make your way through different stages or rooms, you will encounter increasingly difficult sets of enemies and environmental hazards, and more importantly, find new magic spell cards which you can combine and use to your liking. Combine this with over-the-top characters and great voice acting to back them up, and I think we have a very strong roguelite offering for you. However, there are a few things that detract from the overall experience, but let's get to the good stuff first. Your mother was a bunny, and your father smelled of glitterberry. You play as Dandy Ace, a magician so great and so fabulous that his rival, the green-eyed illusionist, can't stand watching his success. So he does what any other Maleficent magician would do, and constructs a cursed mirror in which to trap Dandy Ace for eternity. During your runs through the different rooms of the cursed mirror, you'll encounter a being who looks mysteriously like Lele the illusionist, but is unnamed, along with several of your friends who have also been trapped here, like your stage assistants Jolly Jolly and Jenny Jenny. Mr. Ace, I finally found you. Jolly Jolly, are you hurt? Mister, the day I get hurt falling through a cursed mirror is the day I won't make our show happen. Your assistants can help you buy card upgrades for future runs or trinkets with different buffs for your current run. We'll talk more about those a bit later. As you progress through more rooms and more boss fights, the story continues to unfold as told to you by your unnamed acquaintance in green, and you begin to learn more about Lele and why he has trapped Dandy Ace. The story is extravagant, as you would expect from a game based on magicians, and the voiceover is equally over the top and cheesy, but in the self-aware kind of way that I appreciated. Dandy Ace is so affable and naive, and the Green Knight Illusionist is constantly narrating your battle with witty quips and tropes that kept me chuckling. You're going to pay for that! Seriously, these bows are expensive. Now, for the gameplay, this is a rogue light, as in less sugar and fewer calories. The rooms you progress through are not randomized, but laid out on a map so that you can see which ones are coming next, and eventually you'll learn them as well. In most cases, when you get to the end of a room, you'll have two options regarding which room to enter next, so some of the choice is up to you as well. In roguelite fashion, as you progress further in the game and further into the cursed mirror, you'll unlock permanent upgrades to make earlier rooms go by more quickly, while enabling you to take on bigger and stronger opponents later down the line. You begin each run by choosing the three cards in front of you, the blue giving you a movement type bonus like a dash or teleport, the pink granting you a basic attack, and the yellow being area control. You can have a total of four attacks, with each attack being represented by up to two cards. Let's talk more about these cards before getting into the structure of the runs, because the cards are where the magic is really at. These cards have a main effect and a bottom text, usually just one aspect of the top part of the card, like a stun or burn effect. You can, and should, combine the top and bottom of two cards to create your own attack combinations and play style. Some effects only trigger on an opponent's death, but affect surrounding enemies too, like Death Bomb, which explodes and damages surrounding opponents after the afflicted opponent dies. I found the customization options to be really fun and interesting, not just coming down to sheer hit point numbers, but some card combinations grant very strong effects, like adding the five of a kind card effect to any other attack means that when an opponent is hit, five cards come out from him and attack nearby enemies. This is great for situations where you're being overrun, and it's only one small example of the many variations you can create. The development team at Mad Mimic has also crafted the bosses in such a way that there's not, at least in my playtime, an obvious choice of cards for beating all the bosses with the same setup. You'll need to adapt your deck of cards based on your knowledge of the bosses, and you'll only gain that knowledge by advancing further into the game. So back to the gameplay loop, each room offers you many chances to take on different groups of distinct enemies, while also occasionally dropping healing cupcakes and giving you various cards through randomized treasure chests. You can also stop by the quick wagon shop to buy cards if you have enough gold. Once you fight your way to the end of a room, you will be teleported to the next, where you have an opportunity to rest and heal up. At this time, you can also visit your assistant Jolly Jolly and spend any collected mirror shards on permanent upgrades for future runs. You can also spend shards to decipher a card blueprint you've found, 
and that will unlock it for this run and to discover on future runs. The mirror shards are simply dropped from defeated enemies, so the more you fight and defeat, the faster you can unlock higher progression tiers. While you're in this resting area, you should also visit Jenny Jenny to grab a new trinket, each giving you a different advantage for your current run. It's worth giving them all a read over, although the early game essential in my opinion is the Guardian Angel, which takes you to 1 HP instead of 0 on a killing blow and grants you temporary invulnerability so you have a chance to get out of harm's way and heal up. Once you've spent all your shards and grabbed your trinket, you can talk to the mystery man at the door and he will introduce the next room, or boss. I found the bosses to be difficult, but not too hard. It took me two or three attempts at each, having learned their attacks and capabilities, to be able to defeat them and advance. But if you die at any time, you're reset to the very beginning of the game. So by the time you've seen the early bosses two or three times, an hour has already flown by. And when I say it flies by, I mean it. I played this game for 7 hours, over a span of 2 days, and still wanted more. Unlocking new cards and testing out different combinations keeps things very fresh, and I can't wait to see all the combinations that people come up with. A couple things that I dislike about the gameplay, however, is just how easy it is to back out of a room, trailing along only one or two enemies at a time in an effort to make things easier. There are very few rooms that trap you in and make you fight in a frantic manner, and it just feels like you have too many opportunities to take things slowly and ensure that you don't lose much health. To be honest, this makes the game a bit easier, so maybe some of you will like that aspect, but to me it just felt like there was no sense of urgency, and like there was always an escape if I needed one. Another minor annoyance is the lack of scaling your damage as you progress through a run. You must rely on finding or buying better cards because your earlier cards will quickly become obsolete and take far too long to kill enemies. There are ways further into the game that allow you to level up your current cards, but it feels like this should be implemented a good bit earlier to make your choices matter more and your luck of the draw matter less. As far as the controls, they are simple and responsive. I played on PC and used WASD to move and mouse to aim with two attacks being left and right clicks and the others being spacebar and left shift. They're very easy controls to get used to, and if you can't, all the keys are rebindable on the keyboard and mouse. If you're playing with a controller though, it doesn't appear that you can rebind. The isometric camera feels just right. I can recall being attacked only once from off screen. The minimap is helpful too, as you can see gates before you run up on them, so if you don't have the appropriate key yet, you can turn around and save yourself a little time. It's also useful in noting how many enemies are left in your general vicinity. As I mentioned briefly before, I love the art style and theme. It feels like you're running for your life through a hall of mirrors or a haunted maze. The rooms themselves are very strongly themed, my favorite being the art gallery with its wacky paintings and statues. I like too how the enemies change throughout your time playing, or evolve to fit the room you're in rather, with different looks and abilities while still attacking in basically the same way. You always know when these ladies appear, it's time to turn heel and get lost. And even the helpful aspects of the game, like treasure chests and the shops, give off a feeling like they're just a facade to cover something more menacing. There are a couple things about the game that I could really do without, though. Firstly, the funny flavor text that the green-eyed man yells about after every single enemy encounter gets very repetitive and stale quickly. But he just keeps yelling. Come on! It turns out this is an option in the audio menu, however, and you can change the frequency of his quips along with the volume of them, so you can just turn them off if you want. Also, the music isn't bad, but it's just too repetitive, and I find I would rather enjoy this game with that turned off as well, which is a rarity for me. If you want to keep finding the newest and best indie games and hear genuine reviews from an indie game fanatic like yourself, click the subscribe button and notification bell to make sure you don't miss another video. So the question is, should you play Dandy Ace? I think you should give it a go, especially if you're a fan of roguelites and whimsical humor. The card-based attacks and combinations are the top highlight for me, as they provide a lot of variety to the runs and enable you to easily change your style on the go. And the overall theme and humor of the game is a nice break from the dark and cursed themes that seem so prevalent in games recently. That's gonna do it guys, thank you very much to my 460 subscribers for your support, and I look forward to getting to know more of you soon. 
For more top indie game countdowns and reviews, check out the videos on your screen now, and I'll see you on the other side.